I'm Tony Gosling and I run a website called Bilderberg.org. Uh, Bilderberg is the name of an organisation which I've been following for the last 10 years or so. It's highly secretive and uh, they say that they're a private conference, but I take odds with that. They have uh, most of the European royal families the, from, from around Europe are there. Um, we also have the banking fraternity, we're talking about the heads of the IMF and the World Bank, Bank of International Settlements, which few people have heard of, it's a very powerful bank in Europe, uh, and the Federal Reserve over in the United States, as well as the European Central Bank. Uh, many people think that these banks are run for the good of the public, actually no, they're, they're all private banks, they're all run by uh, private individuals, private companies run for private profit. So in that way it is a private conference but obviously they're, they're working in supposedly in the public interest, so there is a public interest in what they're deciding and what they're up to. Uh, there's also one of the things which I think is a dis bit disturbing about it is that there are many of the heads of media corporations such as Murdoch's News International and uh, governors of the BBC, powerful people from the media go along to these mi meetings too. The other uh, uh, people that go are really government ministers like finance ministers, up and coming opposition leaders from around Europe and the United States, uh, and oil companies like BP, Shell, all the biggest oil companies, their chief executives tend to go along. Uh, they're also, they, although they say it's private, as I said, the security is invariably, well, at every meeting that I've been to, the security is not a private company doing the security, it's the national state security. So we're talking about, say, for example, in the UK, it would be MI5 and the special branch doing the security. Uh, it's the official security companies of the nation, paid for by the taxpayers, who are running their security. So I'm sorry, but this idea of it being a private meeting just doesn't wash, as far as I'm concerned. And there's a very strong public interest in more media coverage of these events. Bilderberg started uh, back in 1954, just after the Second World War. Uh, it was started by two guys, a guy called Joseph Rettinger and uh, another one is uh, Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands. Rettinger was is shown to be a MI6 agent by Stephen Dorrell in his book MI6, 50 Years of Special Operations, which came out a few years ago. And Rettinger was a really shady character, known as an eminence grise. He was uh, shadowing uh, uh, General Sikorsky during the Second World War, who had a very mysterious accident at the end of the war uh, when he crashed in a plane just off Gibraltar. That was very convenient for the great powers because Poland had just been uh, really just donated to, as a nation to Stalin by Roosevelt and Churchill as they'd had the negotiations uh, at the end of the Second World War at Yalta uh, to decide how to carve up Europe at the, uh, at the end of Nazi Germany. Uh, Sikorsky was a real problem for them because he wanted Poland to stay really with the Western countries and with Britain who'd started uh, sec the Second World War in order to liberate Poland. So Sikorsky was disappeared out of the way and Rettinger had been by his side all the way through the war and that was one of the first ever aircraft trips that, uh, that uh, Sikorsky took that Rettinger wasn't on. He was one of the key people afterwards in the 50s after the end of the Second World War in setting up Bilderberg conferences. The other guys are equally dodgy. This is Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands. Bernhard, before the Second World War, enlisted enthusiastically as a member of the SS and was an SS officer. So if people are saying, well, this organisation is benevolent or benign, I think we should look at those who set it up. Neither of them are benevolent, neither are divine. And if anyone's had any doubt about Bernhard, he was embro embroiled in a massive scandal in 1975 over a million dollar bribe which was paid to him by Lockheed. Many, many people remember the Lockheed scandal, but Bernhard, the originator and chairman of Bilderberg meetings for many years, was right at the centre of that scandal. Bilderberg doesn't include people from all around the world, rich people from all around the world, really only from the NATO countries, from Europe and North America. Um, and Paul Hauser, who was an SS uh, uh, general, not a general, but a, some, some sort of German Uberfuhrer kind of thing during the Second World War, in charge of an SS Panzer Corps, said after the Second World War that NATO originated in the international brigades of the SS. That is to say, Nazi sympathizers throughout Europe were enrolled in the early stages of NATO to get the whole project moving. So I think we need to have questions now about 
what is NATO really all about? Is it there as a benevolent force, or is it in some way inherited something from the Nazis? Uh, there's a very great deal of suspicion about this, because uh, NATO organised something in the 1960s, 70s and 80s, uh, which was a BBC programme by Alan Frankovich, Time Watch, in 1993, called Operation Gladio. Operation Gladio was uh, essentially uh, a black operation used to discredit uh, the left right throughout Europe. There were attacks on the communists in Italy. This was organized by P2, uh, Masonic Lodge and the CIA. And uh, in Italy and in Belgium. In Italy, uh, Aldo Moro, Prime Minister, was kidnapped and assassinated. And uh, there were many attacks. Uh, the Bologna railway station where 80 odd people were killed is another one. These were all attacks carried out by NATO uh, special operations, uh, that is to say sort of special forces within NATO, and then blamed on the left. So we're, uh, the, uh, as it was, uh, Action Direct in Belgium and, uh, and other forces, supposed left-wing uh, extremist forces, and uh, the Red Brigades in, uh, in Italy. Of course, it wasn't really carried out by the extreme left, it was carried out by the far right. NATO had very, very close lines into the far right. Um, so with it, I mentioned briefly there P2, the, uh, the Italian Masonic Lodge, which was uh, investigated at the time of Gladio and implicated in these uh, attacks on the Italian political system by the CIA. Uh, there's also a connection between the Freemasons, a very, very close one between the Freemasons and Bilderberg. Many people think that it's, oh, well, that must be just a conspiracy of some sort. But there is a very, very close tie-in with the far right and Bilderberg and the Freemasonry. Because Andrew Palmer, who was the guy that organised the Bilderberg Conference in Turnbury, the last one to take place in the UK back in 1998, uh, which was attended by Gordon Brown, uh, this Bilderberg conference was uh, organised by Andrew Palmer, who is also the personal assistant to the world's top Freemason, uh, the, the Duke of Kent, who is actually the Grand Master of World Freemasonry. So we're looking now at these kind of gladio operations, uh, and what is the implication here? It seems to be that there are ways of, uh, of sparking conflict. The object of gladio was really to bring the European uh, uh, governments much more in line with an anti-Soviet policy and this is also happening now with 9-11 and the uh, London attacks and other attacks on Western people. I believe quite strongly that there needs to be a proper investigation into 9-11 and a proper investigation into 7-7. We've had both uh, the 9-11 Commission report which was really a whitewash, um, we've had uh, Tony Benn, we've had um, John Pilger and other very well respected journalists saying that this report is a whitewash and if you have a look at it you'll see that there are many questions such as the collapse of World Trade Center Building 7, the non-appearance of the US Air Force to defend the country on 9-11 and there are many things also to do with the London attacks which really need looking at properly such as the warning given to uh, uh, the Israeli Finance Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in London. If Netanyahu can be warned about the conference, uh, sorry about the bombings, why can't anybody else? So anyway, this year's Bilderberg looks like it's going to be taking place in Istanbul, and I think all eyes should be on that conference because there will be a major push there, uh, I would imagine, for, to, to close the attack on Iran, which has been uh, really stopped by the hostage crisis and many other things that have been going on recently. So Istanbul, all eyes on Istanbul. Remember, back in 2003 was the first, sorry, 2002 was the first we heard at the Bilderberg Conference that there was a real serious push for an attack on Iraq. So it, it would really uh, surprise me if there wasn't uh, some stuff going on this year, although we always have to guess what they're going to be talking about, to do with rolling off the neoconservative Project for the New Amer American Century plan, really for world domination by a dying economic American power and the last, I would hope to see, the death throes of the American economic power.